Have you ever noticed how your arms seem to have a mind of their own? In this video, we're diving deep into the art of controlling your arm movements while surfing. Welcome to a journey that will transform your surfing style and bring a new level of confidence and control to your rides. We'll be tackling exactly why our arms are so important for our surfing, why they can go a bit crazy, and exactly how to overcome this, as well as an arm position guide so you know exactly where to place your arms at the right time to display your best and most stylish surfing. And if you are new here, my name is Ben Considine and I'm a longboard enthusiast, a competitor and coach, and I'm here to share my learnings and experiences like this one today with you all. So if you do find the video valuable and you find it useful, feel free to subscribe. And if you know of anyone else who might find it useful as well, feel free to share it with them. But let's get straight into the edit. So surfing is an abundance of fun, but have you ever actually stopped to think about how your arms are influencing and contributing to your overall surfing, for better or worse? Our arms aren't just limbs when we're surfing, they're directors of style and balance. As we glide across waves, they guide our body's rotation, keeping us on track and establishing glide, flow and control. On top of this, the arms play a crucial role in the aesthetics of surfing, and some of the most stylish riders, they've got a secret and this is a calm and controlled upper body. It's not just about function, it's about looking good whilst you're doing it. So let's break it down. Why do our arms sometimes go absolutely wild? The wild arm syndrome? We've all been there, but why does it happen? You see, our arms are like our body's balancing act. When something's off kilter, whether within us or on the board, our arms take center stage. But here's the kicker. Taming your arms isn't just about where to put them, it's about addressing the root cause. Think about it like this. As a physiotherapist myself, I often use in clinic people's arms to assess their balance. Something we might do with people is get them into a single leg stance and their arms might start to wave around. But more specifically, we need to address the root cause and so I'll be looking at their ankle stabilizers, also the stabilizers of the hip, the knee, as well as the core muscle activation, and how all of this is activating to keep everything stable and secure. There may be some arm movement, but the arms moving again is not the cause of the problem, it's just an indicator of something else that we need to address. So with our surfing, we need to be looking at and understanding whether it is a lack of dynamic balance we have as surfers, or is it our position on the board or the wave? In this way, we can understand that when standing on one leg, our arms reveal the instability within us or the conditions around us. Imagine standing on a wobbly surface on land. It's a recipe for arm flailing. Now translate to the surf. Choppy waters, powerful moves, complex maneuvers, they all challenge our balance. So it's not just about stifling your arms, it's about mastering your equilibrium. All right, so let's get practical. When the arms start their wild dance, it's time to act. And the first things to focus on will be the knees and our stance. So picture this, narrow stance, straight legs. This is a common scenario, especially for longboarders. It's perfect for a nice relaxed trim stance, but it won't necessarily cut it in trickier conditions. So here's the fix. Bend those knees and widen the stance. By doing so, you're tapping into the power of your lower body, stabilizing your ride and cushioning those unexpected changes in the wave dynamics. I often say that the knees are the shock absorbers on the wave, but only when we bend them. Remember, when your lower body takes charge, those arms won't steal the show. All right, so let's get into board positioning. Whether we're turning or trimming, it's all about being in the right place. For trimming, shift to the center for optimal balance and speed. If we're on the tail of the board when we're trying to trim, this oftentimes isn't where we're going to be gaining speed, unless we're riding a shortboard or a high performance longboard and we're engaging the rail through pumping. We can improve the stability here by coming into the center or the wide point of the board, allowing the board to carry more natural trim speed and also improving our stability by coming into the most balanced part of the board. For turning, we need to make sure we're on the correct position on the tail. If we find that we're too far forward to execute our turn properly because we're not over the pivot point on the tail, which is very common for longboarders, the board won't be as responsive as we may expect or need, which will compromise our balance, as where we anticipate the board will go and how it will react won't necessarily match what's actually happening. So making sure that you're hitting the tail properly and have the skills to get yourself forwards and backwards on the board so we can effectively access all points on the board is really important. 
Now, we've just covered some of the tips and positions that can really help to improve our balance on the surfboard and so tame our arms right down. But ultimately, sometimes it can actually be our general and overall balance ourselves that can inhibit our balance on our surfboard. So focusing on our balance can be a really, really good path to follow. What we're really looking to do with these exercises is focusing on the foot and ankle, hip, knee, and core stabilizers, and ideally testing their ability to keep static and in position against external perturbations and other factors. There are some really good exercises that I like to give to people to help with this, but just not looking to make this video 20 minutes long today but if you are keen to see some of this and even if you have some other ideas for exercises that you'd like to see uh, I might do a video on this next week so let me know in the comments down below if you'd like to see something like that in a bit more depth and also what sort of things you'd like to see as well we might get into that next week all right so finally let's get into the arm position guide so I like to use the analogy of a musician without an instrument. The same thing with a surfer. If you don't know where to place your arms, sometimes this can lead to some awkward flailing. So here's my guide to correct arm positioning for different maneuvers and wave scenarios. All right, so here is the guide to how I like to position my arms when I'm doing different things on the board and coming into different sections and everything like that. So first thing with our trimming, obviously when we're trimming and we're cruising along, hands by side is perfect. But when things do start to get a little bit more precarious and there's faster or steeper sections, we do, as we spoke about, want to make sure that we're widening that stance and getting into a low base of support. And so when we're doing this, I think hands over one side of the rail and about waist height is perfect. So this is just a really good way to still look calm, relaxed and in control, but ready to act and move as we need to. Now, as we're stepping into turns, the most important thing I think to making sure that the arms look in control is the arms moving together. What I usually see and what happens when people look out of control is that firstly the arms go up into the air but also that the arms move independent of each other and so instead of a coordinated action we see that one arm might come backwards. If we go for a turn and then that arm accidentally falls backwards then things are going to uh, look a little bit less controlled but what I like to do for our turns in particular moving the arms together is that the uh, leading arm is going to extend out towards the wave or the water and then the uh, trailing arm is going to be hooking around the body almost like we're pointing to the direction that we want to be going and that will happen simultaneously and together so we're doing this movement there and we're trying to make sure that everything is moving at once so I find that that's a really good way to also functionally bring our body and rotate it around um, keeping everything around the chest height for this is also a really good thing to do. If it's too low, then we limit our rotation. If it's too high though, I like to think if we're going above the shoulders with our hands, unless we're adding in a nice stylistic element, this can be what makes things look a little bit less controlled. So that's the turning. When we're coming into our cross stepping, again, arms nice and low by the hips and waist is really, really good. And again, I like to make sure that we're keeping the hands over both sides of the rail and just keeping that nice, cruisy approach, keeping everything nice and low. Where the hands come up here, again, is an indicator that we're coming off control like we saw with our single leg balance. So we wanna make sure that everything stays nice and low, but we're ready and we keep that approach as we're cross stepping forwards. I like to make sure that we're maintaining this arm position and hand position for our hang fives. This is of course just preference. Um, again, if you wanna make sure that you're showing some style, you can throw them up in the air, but to make sure that we're staying in control, keep everything nice and low around the waist, even as we hop onto the hang five. And then as a personal preference for me, as we drop into the hang 10, I like to bring the hands onto the thighs. I think this looks really, really good shows really good control again because our arms are by our sides and they're not uh, going everywhere and i found by having this position as well and making sure that we bring our hands right onto our thighs almost it's a really good thing to a cue for us to know exactly where to place our hands so that they're not up here now if we're not right on the thighs there then i would probably like to see that the hands are low by the hips and waist so a bit of a trend there, except for our turn, we have the hands relatively low. Now, of course, coming into precarious scenarios, the hands will flail up and go everywhere, but the more that we can focus on these positions, so uh, trimming by our side or on the ready, one hand over each side of the rail, and the same thing for our cross-stepping, 
hang five, and then dropping the hands for the hang 10. Really good way to think about it. So I hope that's handy. And that's my little kind of go-to uh, quick scheme of how we position the hands for these different maneuvers that we're going for. All right, thanks so much for watching today, guys. Hopefully you found some of that useful. Uh, for any sort of ways to support the channel, please feel free to check out the links below, whether it's buying some of the Glide Surf Collective product, uh, some video analysis, or even just a donation. Really, really appreciate it, and it does help with the upcoming World Tour contests that I'll be traveling to. But we'll leave it there, and we'll catch you on the next one.